Hi, I'm Ryan Ronander. I'm a solutions architect at Linbit. In this video, we will be discussing geoclustering with Pacemaker, also known as multi-site pacemaker clustering. What is geoclustering, you might ask? Technically, it is a one cluster per site deployment that enables applications to fail over not just between nodes within a cluster, but across entirely different sites. So why would you need geoclustering as opposed to just a local two or three node pacemaker cluster? First, a single cluster can handle node failures, but it doesn't exactly give you disaster recovery options if your entire site goes down. All of your eggs are still in one highly available basket. Also, you can't simply combine nodes in one site and more disaster recovery nodes from another site and make one large single cross-site pacemaker cluster. First, Pacemaker's communication layer, known as Corosync, expects low latency network links for managing highly available services in real time. Second, any severed communication between the sites would lead to a split brain situation inside the cluster. Due to this, stretching a single cluster across separate sites or regions really isn't an option. That's where geoclustering comes in. Geoclustering uses two separate but identically configured pacemaker clusters residing in different sites. A third site also exists. It contains a single node that functions solely as an arbitrator to manage failovers between the two main sites. Due to this architecture, geoclustering is often referred to as a cluster of clusters. For example, let's use a single pacemaker cluster running a highly available database with storage replicated by DRBD. In this cluster, you could lose a node and the services would fail over from one node to another. Everything continues running, but that only gets you redundancy within a single site. If the entire site fails, you still need some way to move and start services from one site to another. So how do the services fail over? Well, the clusters need a way to make decisions about whether a service is even allowed to run on a given site. So that's where Booth comes in. Booth communicates with multiple pacemaker clusters and allows them to have a certain cluster property called a ticket. Tickets can be granted or revoked manually as well as automatically during failover scenarios. Keep in mind a ticket may only be granted to one site at a time. If a site has a ticket, then any services that are constrained to that ticket are allowed to run on that site. Booth is the pacemaker add-on that allows services to be started, stopped, and fail over across multiple sites. As for voting, all three sites are able to cast one vote. Two out of three votes are required for a ticket to be granted. If a ticket has been granted to site B, yet site B becomes unavailable to sites A and C, then the ticket will be revoked from site B and granted to site A. Our resources will then fail back over to site A automatically. In a nutshell, Booth is a way to inform pacemaker clusters whether they're even allowed to run services or not. Keep in mind, Booth doesn't replicate any data between the clusters. That's where DRBD and DRBD proxy come into the picture. So, we're using DRBD to replicate data in each local cluster synchronously. But in order to replicate data from one cluster to another, we need to use DRBD proxy. DRBD proxy allows us to overcome network latencies and replicate data between the clusters asynchronously. This configuration gives us four total replicas of data across both clusters. Booth and Pacemaker handle which cluster, and in turn which node, can run a service. DRBD and DRBD proxy allows the data to stay synchronized on each node where those services may run. I hope you're starting to see why Pacemaker and DRBD are such a powerful, extensible, high availability combination. So, with a little help from Booth, as well as DRBD proxy, we can have highly available services that now span across more than just one pacemaker cluster in a single site. One more thing to note, because the booth arbitrator is often deployed as a single node, if the booth arbitrator fails, and is no longer able to participate in voting, as long as sites A and B can still communicate, then we can still grant and revoke tickets between the two main sites. However, without an arbitrator, the cluster won't survive a failure of another site, as again, two active sites are required to grant and revoke tickets automatically. You can learn more about geoclustering with the information available on our website. Everything will be linked in the video's description below. On our website, you can find user's guides, blog posts, as well as a tech guide walking you through how to deploy geoclustering. Also, feel free to reach out to us on our community Slack channel, and thanks for watching.